Hi everyone and welcome to another Fast API video. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through path and query parameters. So we're going to explore the different things that we can do with path and query parameters in Fast API and how we can use them. So without further ado, let's get started. Now right here in our app.py file or our module, we have our Fast API instance created that's going to allow us to basically create the different URLs to our app. In this case, I'm going to start by creating a first, our first route or our first URL. And this URL is actually going to have a path parameter. We are simply going to come right here and I'm going to specify that this is going to be a get request. Now this get request is going to be a get request to a certain endpoint, but this endpoint has to have a path parameter. So I'll just come right here. And let's say this is going to get for us a specific resource of a user on our API. So I'll just simply call this slash user and then I'll provide the user ID. So I'll just call it the user ID. Now that we've done this, I'll provide a function that's going to handle this request. So this is going to be a, a sync def. Then I'll basically say that this is going to get for us the user. Now each time we want to use a path parameter, we need to provide our ID as or that specific path parameter as a parameter to this function. Now in this case, we shall need to provide that as our user ID, and then we specify what this is going to return. So I'll just come and say it's going to return, and here we shall say it's going to return a user ID, and the value of this user ID is going to be the user ID we provided within our function. Now when I go ahead and save this, I'm going to simply run our server with ubicon, I'll specify that our app instance is located within the main module and then I'll point to that specific app instance. So since we are developing, we shall need our code to reload. I'll pass in the reload option and then go ahead and run this app. So right here, I have a tool that I'm using as our request client or our API client and it's called Insomnia. I'm just going to simply create a new request. So I'll just simply call this get user by ID. And this is going to be a get request, but you can simply go ahead and specify get post put and whatever request you may want to send. So I'll create it. And after creating it, I'm going to specify that our URL in this case is going to be localhost 8000. So we shall provide our user ID. So in this case, what we want to do is to actually get a user by the ID. So we're going to slash user slash user ID. Now simply come right in here. And when I come, I can say, that we're going to go to slash user slash foo. And when we send this, we now see that our user ID is full. So this is actually taking in a user ID from our URL as a path parameter, but it's returning this as a string. Let's try for an integer. So let's say I wanted to pass this ID as an integer. Now I'm going to pass in the integer 34. And when I go ahead and send this request, we now see that it's returning a string of 34. Now, what if we wanted to actually return only have actually what we want is to only have an integer as our user ID. Now simply come right in here and what I have to do is to specify with type hints that our user ID here is going to actually be an integer. Now the way I'll do that is to provide it as our integer and once I do that I'm going to go ahead and save. So let's go back to our insomnia right here. So when I send this we now see that our user ID is being returned as an integer. Now let's try sending this again as a string. I'm simply going to come right in here and all I have to do is to pass in our foo. Now when I send this, we now see that FastAPI is actually using our request handler function with Pydantic to be able to, val to validate and be able to tell us that you are not going to be able to pass a string while we actually need the path parameter to be an integer. So right here we have these validations working for us. So we see that the value is not a valid integer and the type error we are getting is the one for an integer. So we've been able to look at how we can be able to create these path parameters and how we can be able to validate them. Now, the only validations we can do with this kind of method are only validations for type. Now, what if we wanted to bring in some validations that are for, let's say, the max length or the mean length or some other kind of validation? Now, that's where the path function comes in from FastAPI. The, first, the path function allows us to basically do these validations in an advanced way. So I'm going to go back to our code right here. And the first thing I'll do is to import our path function. I'll just come and say from FastAPI, we're actually going to import our path function. 
And right after importing our path function, now we can go ahead and specify that our that our specific path parameter is going to be a path and it's going to have some other attributes. So what I can do right here is to specify that our user ID is going to be an integer. And what we can do is to come and provide this as a path. So I'm just going to come and provide this as a path. So I'm just going to come and say that this is going to be a path. And once we have this as a path, we can be able to describe things such as the max length. So I'm going to change this type to a string so that we see the max length in action. And I'm just simply going to come here and provide this as a max length of let's say uh, six. And I'll change this to a string so that you have our ID as a string. I'm going to go ahead and save. So let's try to actually send this request again. Now when you send this request again, we now see that actually our server is not running. So I'll go back here. I'll try to basically run our server. So it seems like we are missing one required argument, which is our default. So when we have a string and we want to use the path parameter function or the path function, we need to provide a default. So what I'll do in this case is to come within our path function. And the first argument I'm going to give in here is going to be our default. So I'm going to pass in our default and our default is going to be none. Now I'm going to go ahead and save. And when I save, I'm going to pull up our terminal again and run our server. So when I go back right here, I'm going to send this request. And now we can see that our user ID is being returned as a string. So everything is working fine at this point. Now let's go ahead and try to send this as something that's greater than the max length that we specified. Now just come right here and let's say we're going to have this as four bar and then four. When I try to send this, we now see that we are getting a validation error that's telling us that this value should be at most six characters. Now this is the beauty of path function. So each time you want to validate a query parameter, you can use the path function to allow you to do some advanced operations on the validations. Now let's go ahead and look at query parameters. Now to create a query parameter, we need to just define it as an extra argument to our request handler function without having to actually pass it within our URL. Now what do I mean? I'm going to head over to our terminal right here. So I'll close the terminal for now. And all I have to do is to say at app.get. And in this case, what I'll do is to provide our, our URL. So in this case, our path is going to be slash users. Now let's say this is a long list of users. And let's say we have some pagination that we want to actually use to return a shorter list of users. Now in this case, instead of defining our page number or our limit to uh, be a path parameter, we can define this within our request handler function. Now simply going to define this function and this is going to be get users. Now within get users, I'm going to go ahead and provide our path as well as our limit. So in this case, I'll just come and say that we're going to have a path and actually this is going to be a page number, sorry for this. And this page number should be an integer. Now I'm also going to go ahead and provide our limit. So I'm going to come and provide our limit, which is also going to be an integer. Now after doing this, I'll simply come and return an empty list of users since we don't have any users at this point. Now, when I go ahead and send this request, we expect that's going to return for us an empty list of users. So I'll just come right here and what I have to do is to create a new request and I'm going to simply call this request get all users and I'll create, after creating this, I'll go to localhost. This is going to be our localhost 8000 slash users and when I send, in this case, we see that our fields are missing. So we are getting validations by default because now we provided a page number as well as a limit, but in this case, we have not provided those. So what this actually means is if we describe these parameters or if we give the values of these query parameters within our function and provide with them types, it actually makes them required by default. So we need to pass them and if we don't pass them, then we have a problem. We are actually going to get validation errors. So let's try to see what's going to happen. Now, in this case, I'll go back and what I'll do is to provide our query parameters. So providing a query parameter is as simple as providing a question mark 
now start with our page and that page is going to be let's say page one now when you want to provide another query parameter we provide the unsign and then we give in the limit so in this case i'm going to pass in the limit and in this case what i'll do is to pass in a limit uh, let's say two so when i send this now we see that our request has been passed successfully this is wonderful because now we don't need to basically get errors at this point but the problem with this is we are having both of our query parameters as things we need to provide without choosing so we need to actually make this optional so by making them optional we require to use the optional class from typing and the way we do that is i'm going to head over to our code right here so the first thing i'll do is to import the optional class from typing do not worry typing comes within the python standard library so i'll just come right here and what i'll have to do is to say from typing i'm going to go ahead and import our optional class and after importing our optional class now i can basically set the types of these specific query parameters as optionals and then go ahead and also give them default values as we're going to see so i'm just going to come right here and what i have to do is to change our let's say we're going to provide our limit as an optional query parameter i am just going to come in here and all i have to do is to say uh we need to provide this as an optional and this option is going to be uh let's say an int and we can also go ahead and provide it as a default character so actually a default value and in this case i'll give it a default value of none and let's go ahead and try to to send our request so when i go back to insomnia right here and try to send this request with only the page as the only query parameter we have for this request when i send this we now see that it's actually optional we're not getting any errors so let's also try to return these query parameters and see what's going to happen now i'm going to return a dictionary in this case let's say we're going to have our page and that page in this case is going to be our page as specified within our request handler function i also go ahead and provide our limit so and actually this is going to be our key of limit and then we shall go ahead and also provide this limit so i'll just come and say that we shall have our limit so when i go ahead and save i'm going to go to our insomnia right here and when i send this we now see that we're having our page as one as well as our limit as now because we provided our limit as a now value just like you can see here let me actually enlarge this so we can be able to see that we have our page and our limit as a now value all right now what if we went ahead and try to play different in this case we're going to look at how we use the the query function that is similar to the way we use the path function when dealing with path parameters now i'm going to go ahead and import it so i'll just come right in here and all i'll do is to say that we're going to import our query function now this query function is also going to play the same role it's going to allow us to do some advanced validations on our query parameters so at this point we've been able to use optional but we're going to look at how we can be able to get away with using with using uh get away with actually doing these validations without even needing to carry out uh to use the optional class so the way i'm going to do that is by coming right here so i'm going to go ahead and change this and what i have to do is to change this to let's say a uh, limit being an integer and in this case we're going to specify that we're going to use the query function to define how our query parameter is actually going to be now i can come in here and all i have to do i have different attributes such as the max length i can also have actually when you hover here we have attributes such as the string or if if there is a default we can provide a default if there's a title we can provide a title if it's a float greater than less than now in this case we can actually use less than or greater than so let's say our our string is actually our integer or our limit is going to be less than 20 so we can come and provide this as lt and lt is equal to 20 we can also go ahead and now that we have this we can actually also provide a default so i can just come and say that our default is going to be equal to uh, none so we can provide this as none as a default and once we have this i'm going to go ahead and save and let's try it making this request at this point so when i try to make this request 
we now see that you're having our default as now and you don't have any errors for now so let me try to also provide a number that's greater than 20 so that we actually get to see the validations working so i'll come right here and provide and then i provide our limit and let's say our limit is going to be uh, 67. so when i send this we now see that our query parameter has an issue we're actually having a validation error and this validation error is showing us that the value should be less than 20. so by using this for integers you can actually specify things such as less than greater than so let's say we wanted to specify that the number should be greater than therefore shall just come and change this to greater than that would be gt less than that would be for less than and so on and so forth so i hope you've learned from this video and i've just been actually showing you how to use path and query parameters with fast api in this video we've been able to look at path and query parameters in fast api i hope you've learned something from this video please leave a comment down in the description telling me about a fast api topic that you'd want me to to create i'm actually creating a course on fast api that i'll give at a very cheap price if you've enjoyed this video please leave a like don't forget to subscribe and i hope to see you in the next video bye